Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. Once again, for some strange reason, on the Ruinberg map, it's like a bad penny, it keeps turning up. Uh, this is Little Brother from the Circumflexus clan in the French Tier 8 tank destroyer, the AMX AC-48. For me, this machine kind of epitomises everything to love and hate about the French tank destroyer. Wait, don't get me wrong, I like the French tank destroyers, I like all of them, even the bad ones. And this is not a bad one, but it definitely has certain uniquely French limitations. In fact, you could look at it as everything that's remarkable about the French tank destroyers is remarkable for the opposite reason on the British tank destroyers. When the British are slow and heavily armoured, the French are fast and not heavily armoured. Where the British tank destroyer guns tend to be lower calibre, but with amazing firing arcs and very fast aiming times, uh, the French are not. <laughs> the thing is, the French tank destroyers do work. Just for completely different reasons to why the British tank destroyers work. Although you can argue that some of the British tank destroyers don't work, but you could say that about the French as well. So let's talk about the protection, the armour. Because the thing with the French tank destroyers is they... They definitely do not have good all-round protection, and they tend to rely on armour sloping at the front rather than armour thickness. And armour sloping is great because it means less weight, which means you can go faster while still having the same effective protection. Which is great, assuming that you're only getting shot at from the front, and your armour is actually sloped relative to whoever's shooting at you, because if you're not, and it isn't, you only have 60mm of armour. And a British tank destroyer with 120 millimetres of armour, it might be slow, but 120 is still at least 120 from any angle. The AMX AC-48 does not have that problem, however, because that sloped armour at the front is actually 150 millimetres thick. Still probably want to avoid getting shot at from the sides though, where it's only 55, and the rangefinder on the top is basically impossible to hide. And it doesn't have 150 millimetres of armour. Talk about the other problem that all French tank destroyers have, and that's the firing arc. You see that there? That is as far as you can turn the gun to the left. And it's the same turning the gun to the right. Now if you have a fast aiming time, that's not too much of a problem. But French tank destroyers also tend to have slow aiming times. And that used to be a massive problem for the AMX AC-48, because when this tank was introduced into the game, it didn't have an autoloader. But as you just saw there, the addition of this autoloader helps to mitigate that narrow firing arc and slow aiming time problem. Because if you've got a target in that firing arc and you can pump the shells out quickly, you can kill the target before it gets out of the narrow firing arc, or at least do the maximum amount of damage possible, before you have to move the machine in order to bring the gun to bear on the target because it's moved too far to the left or right and have to go through that long aiming cycle again. British tank destroyers sidestep this problem entirely. If the poster boy would probably be in the tortoise at tier 9, which could move up to that corner, stay on this side of the corner, and not have to go around, and still point the gun around thanks to its amazingly good 90 degree firing arc covering the front of the machine. Also, very fast aiming times, and a quick reload without the benefit of an autoloader. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. There's that 55mm aside armor for you. <laughs> It's not good. <laughs> it's not good at all. But he's got the front pointing towards the enemy. He's got that bit of rubble covering up his lower glacis. And all of the enemies shooting back at him there are inside that front firing arc. And they're mostly too far away to accurately be able to hit the rangefinder on top. Mostly. Not all of them. Yeah, the T-20 over there is likely to be a problem. The guys down in the middle of the road there are getting so desperate. They're starting to fire high explosive at him. But the T-20 and potentially also the AMX 1357 can hit the rangefinder, and the T20 just did, and that's bad. And then he takes 32 damage from a high explosive shell, which reduces him to seven hit points. <laughs> <He's>, uh... <laughs> the T20 keeps popping out and going for that rangefinder. He clearly knows what to do. He needs to kill that guy, he's got one shot left. There, good. Okay, now maybe he's safe, although he's taken no chances because a single hit on that rangefinder, you can see him wiggling the machine there, in order to make it as difficult as possible for anybody to hit it, while being careful not to stick his ass out because he only has 55mm of side armor. <laughs> Things just got interesting, and with the scores at 8 kills each, and the enemy team 
good 2,000 hit points ahead. <laughs> this could definitely go either way. Right. Priority from here on in is to not get spotted, because there is an enemy tank destroyer out there somewhere. We pumped a couple of shots into his side, and there's an enemy AMX 1350... Oh, there's the Giro. It's one shot. And finished off by the Hellcat. Actually, the Super Hellcat. Oh, speaking of tank destroyers, there's the CC-56. I have no idea what that machine's capabilities are. And the ARL V-39. Still unspotted. Gets one shot out, one shot remaining, goes undetected, fires blind, kills him anyway. Right. Team of one killer. Oh, you got spotted. Ducks into cover. <laughs> because he doesn't want to die. Um, oh, and... Oh, wow, there's three enemy machines in the field now. And he's starting to run out of allies up here. There's just the Super Hellcat left. Guarding his flank and rear. Waiting for the reload. There is some concealment here, but... And there's the AMX. And he got spotted. Takes one shot, kills him. Backs the hell up. Not interested in any kind of return fire. Sees an enemy, points the front towards him. Survives. Unfortunately, uh, he's just lost the Super Hellcat, which means his flank and rear is now vulnerable. He's got two shots left. And there's a Barask back there. And the CC-56 as well. And yet another enemy tank destroyer detected on the far northern end of the field, although he has his own problems right now. There's the Barask. One shot. Dodges the return fire. The Barask chooses violence when it should have chosen caution. And that, kids, is kill number eight. There's the Ravi Walters medal. Eight kills, four of which were achieved after he was reduced to seven hit points. <laughs> There's now only two enemies left against four friendlies, but with seven hit points, if he's not extremely careful, there could very soon be two enemies left against three friendlies. You see, most people under these circumstances would probably be thinking, myself included, I've, I've done my job, I've got my Randy Walters medal, let's chill out and let the rest of the team take the chances. Not little brother. <laughs> let's kill number nine. <laughs> He smells that pool's medal. He wants his 10th kill. So he's going to chill out here while he waits for the reload and let the rest of the team find that last remaining enemy tank destroyer. And they have. Right. Now he's safely tucked on the other side of the house there, so he doesn't actually have direct line of sight or line of fire to Little Brother, allowing him to cross this field very quickly because he's a French tank destroyer. Oh, 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 careful, nearly, he nearly saw you. <laughs> See him divert there as the enemy backed up. Can he get around? It's all going to depend on which way the SU-101's gun is pointing. Oh, oh, no, I thought I saw a gun pointing this way. <laughs> um, oh, screw it, what the hell, why not? No, he's pointing the other way. Go for it. Chicks dig scars and glory lasts forever. There's two. Can he get... Oh, that narrow firing arc? No, that's what screwed him. That final shot actually went into an ally. He just couldn't swing the gun around as the SU-101 manoeuvred. But, okay, pool's medal denied. But at the end of the day, he did get a Radley Walters medal. He did get nine kills, and he did get five of them while on seven hit points. Chest full of medals and awards there, including the Radley Walters, the Ace Tanker, the Steel Wall, and the Top Gun. Five and a half thousand damage done, nine kills, and more than 1,500 base experience for Little Brother and the AMX AC-48. Hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.